Hello everyone and welcome back and it is uh it's quite the most welcome back because it has been a while. Right off the bat I just want to apologize for the huge delay in the last video. I intended to get this out sooner but I burned out really hard working on it and it just took a while to get back to normal and in the meantime I've been working on other projects and just kind of you know learning some new skills here and there but for the most part uh Everything's done. This video should be going up uh, just slightly before the main channel video that's coming out today. And also there should be that Dark Souls Remastered video, a real short one, uh, to yesterday, tomorrow, yesterday. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yes, so we're going to be talking about the Cursed Halo uh, multiplayer update and the Cursed Halo single player update, uh, both of these things at once, and the video. And uh, the first topic I want to talk about is, of course, the video itself. Um, I think a lot of you guys probably noticed that almost everything in that video is animated in the game engine. Uh, effectively, most of the video is made out of cutscenes. Um, and just to kind of show what I'm talking about, uh, here's one of the starting bits of the video where uh, I, I pull out the milk jug and then pour milk. That's not milk. And then um, another one. Right here, we have a uh, hula hooping animation so these were animated in 3ds max uh using a little rig i set up for master chief and if we go into game uh this is my actual Slay. like testing map that i use uh or, or well, cinema cinema map it's 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 a it's a map full of cutscenes. if i type in intro 03 Please send me an instant message on AOL Instant Messenger if you've been enjoying And uh, video, these are so effectively just, you know, game stuff. Including the fact that uh, a bunch of Warthogs are going to spawn and explode. <laughs> um, same thing with uh, Intro 01. Uh, forget about that, actually. Uh, Slayer. Here, glass. I'll pour you up nice, big... That is not milk. That is Halo 1 pistols. Damn it. I love how the, the stuff just stays attached to because it's scripted in. But yeah, so the gist is that there are maybe like 30 of these little things in this uh, in these map files. There's also a map file that's separate that I will bring up. Um, this is my green screening map that I use for anything that I need uh, separated as an element for the video. Give me one second to find all of the... I am. I have stuff on my other monitor for controlling what's visible here. So one second. All right, there we go. And uh, so this is the green screening map. It's um, it's pretty green. I actually have this floor section right here uh, so that I can tell what the hell's going on because it's actually really disorienting if you're like in this and you don't see the floor. You can't. You don't even know where you're looking. You know what I mean? So kind of, kind of have to have a little bit of a reference area, but uh, for example, the um, the little you know VTuber avatar that I used for my character in the stream parts that's in the bottom right corner, that is actually this right here, and um, he's just rigged up to basically like lip sync by moving his head uh, while sitting here and, and pretending to play a PlayStation Four or Five. Very very ghetto model of a PlayStation model, a PlayStation controller that I found uh, like. Sketchfab or something. <laughs> uh, and of course, we have the same thing for uh, meat. Uh, Vinny did not have Vinny didn't have a face cam or anything, so I just stuck a meat in the bottom corner. Poor meat. Oh, now he's dead. I I killed him, but he doesn't have animations for dying. He only has one animation. Like <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's a big part of this video is like, and why this video took so long is doing those cutscenes is time consuming because there's not only the animation section of this, but there's also just a lot of code. And uh, yes, I am still a barbarian who writes Halo script in a notepad. Um, but yeah, like there's a there's a fair bit of of work that goes into like getting these things working. And I think it's worth it because it makes the video pretty unique, uh, pretty fucking unique. I don't know I don't know how many YouTube videos out there are technically in engine cutscenes in a video game, but. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be doing that for future videos because it was it was it was too time consuming. It made this video take like ten times longer to make than it should have. But it was an experience. It was fun. So all good. 
Uh, I guess the next thing we'll talk about is level design. So I kind of brought, kind of like made jokes about this in the video, but some of the maps are designed to be fun maps. Some of the maps are not designed to be fun maps. Some of them are designed as torture simulators. Uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about some of the torture simulators here. So this one, this fucking map, Tam, this is the uh, the backrooms damnation hybrid. This map is actually was a pain in the ass to make. It's just big and it's very dense and it has a lot going on. Um, you can kind of tell that from the uh, from the wireframe that it's a mess. But um, my goal was to make a map that's impossible to navigate, and I think I succeeded because this map is a nightmare to actually try and figure out where you're where you are in it. Uh, the repeating, the, effectively, it's just like. Uh, four-way mirroring but then also uh, there's a lot of sections I had to like model myself like this part of the map right here is a custom thing I modeled uh, whereas many parts of it are just pulled directly from damnation um, the portaling so I actually had to get help with this I uh, think I want to thank silicon master for specifically like helping me sort this out um, portaling in halo maps is effectively the way they do culling uh, I think they have occlusion culling like, like as you'd expect, but uh, they also use portal-based culling, which the idea is that every part of a Halo map is segmented into like its own cluster, which is usually like a room. Uh, like a room is usually a cluster. Like in this case, um, this this little spot right here is a cluster. Uh, and these green uh, planes kind of show where the clusters are segmented. So we have the planes going through these doorways, which is telling the game engine each of these doorways is uh is one of the ways that you can get into this cluster and get out of this cluster so you have to in order to make a halo map work properly like on a, on a larger scale you don't need this for low poly maps for something there's something that's like 70k polys so you like kind of need these to be correct and you need like every single room in the entire map to be segmented into its own cluster so we spent uh, a lot of time just getting this correct so that there's no leakage because uh, if you don't properly seal it off it, it's called a leak and it just doesn't work correctly it's bad you don't want that um yeah there's there's a lot of portals i think this is actually approaching the portal limit um i think you can have like 512 portals and we have a couple hundred <laughs> i'm not sure exactly how many but quite a lot and uh yeah it, it it works this map actually does render so the the first few versions of this map would not render properly because it was just too dense but after we portaled it really aggressively like this works like a charm. The one thing I'll note though is if you if you get on top of the map and look down and you can see into all the rooms from above, it stops rendering because it just can't handle it. Like that that's like the point where it just gives up. Um and yeah, this map's terrible. It's 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 funny. Like I made a map a, a ton of time went into this, like multiple days of work, and yet it is it's unplayable. <laughs> it's terrible. Definitely take your friends and have them enjoy it. It's great. Uh let's talk about a map that's good though. Uh, I actually quite like um this one, uh, the Danger Canyon upside down map, which also uh, I gotta say, like, from from a, from one perspective, you could say all I did was take a, take a map and flip it over. Uh, I did a lot more than that, and it, it, it's not entirely obvious like what I did. But um, so the map is upside down, but the bases aren't. So I had to basically disassemble the map by parts and like pull the bases out, pull the pull all the like the the structural geometry out and then flip that over and then model them back together. Because uh, modern game engines don't really care about like how you model things. They will just take whatever. Uh, Halo's an old game engine and everything has to be what you would call a, a contiguous mesh or like, I, I, it has to have perfect top, topology would be the way to put it. So like when, a, when, a, when the base meets the wall, it doesn't clip into the wall. The base is like the wall is modeled to meet perfectly with the edges of the base. Uh, I guess this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to like people who don't know much about three D modeling. This is a pain in the ass. Uh, you have to use it's a lot of just like m manual labor <laughs> to get it working in the way that you'd want it to. Um, and yeah, it, it took a while, especially like this part right here. I had to take this entire huge section of the map and just delete it all and then remodel it all back in uh, and uh it, it looks it looks pretty good at this point like it's not perfect you can definitely tell i had to fudge some um i had to fudge some lines here and there but um yeah like you can see where i took this teleporter out 
that was upside down and moved it up here and then cloned it so it could have teleporters here and here as well for another part of the map. Like, this was a pretty big endeavor as well. This one took a long time, but this one's fun. I actually like this map. The upside down warthogs uh, really are just a very unique experience to drive around in. It, it, everyone seemed to be really, really uh, like surprised and interested in it. So I thought it was good. Additionally, those upside down warthogs, uh, they are a mess because you may be thinking, oh, all you did was take a warthog and make it fall up, right? Oh, <laughs> oh no, 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 that would not work because as many of you guys know, um, in Halo, when a vehicle rolls over, it kicks you out of it. Now, technically, if you made a warthog fall up, um, the top of it is still the top, right? So it would hit the ceiling and then as soon as the wheels touch the ceiling, it would be like it's upside down and it's touching the ground, so you would fall out. So I had to invert the physics model. So I took a regular Warthog and I, I did some magic to these numbers. I don't even remember what I did. I just did some magic with these numbers and some of these numbers, <laughs> some of these numbers, and it, it, now it's completely backwards and, and upside down. So now, and then it works. Then after I did that, all the turrets were backwards and all the camera, like the camera controls were reversed because it did not like being upside down. So I had to then go do a bunch of other silly things to the, um, like the model and the animations to make them correct. And after all of that, it's still not perfect. Like it still feels like there's something wrong with it, but it's, it works. Like, I think the issue is the camera really doesn't like being upside down. Um, and it kind of gets mad at you about that, but on the whole, it does work and you can, you can drive it and it is functional. So good enough. <laughs> but yeah, it was a pain in the ass and, uh, it was fun. It's, it's actually, it really it was a cool project to work on. Um, another one I liked was Super Chiron. I don't even remember which one. I'm just going to go off the date. Which one of these was the most recent? That one. So this map also has a triangle problem. It's, um, and, and you can't portal this. This, uh, this being one giant room makes it basically impossible to portal it correctly. And additionally, uh, it's like really high poly as well. This one is, um, how many is this? I think it was like 60, 32,000, well, hugely overestimated. Yeah, 32,000 triangles in a single room uh, is too much for Halo. Uh, so this map has issues where if you stand in the corners and look directly across the map, it will stop rendering because it just hits, it just barely go toes over the line. Additionally, if you play with a really high field of view, it'll probably break that too, but um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this map, I actually think is kind of fun. It's a bit of a, it's just a bit of a cluster, but like, uh, it's a pretty fun cluster. And, uh, the way I modeled this was kind of neat. I basically modeled one quarter of the top floor and then mirrored it, uh, in every direction until I got like the, the pattern I wanted where it's just all crisscrossed and interlocking and stuff. Uh, the other issue with this map was there's so many teleporters that I had a hard time. Like I had to like write a program to like, tell me like what teleporters should go where so that there would be correct linkage. Uh, I think I wrote it in JavaScript. Like I, like a lot of times when I am, um, <laughs> when I'm, when I'm writing a little program to do something, I'll just write it in a JavaScript console and just like, you know, execute it here. I find that to be a much easier way to like prototype something. If it's just going to be like, you know, a couple dozen lines of code, uh, <laughs> So yeah, that's probably where it was and it's probably gone now, but I did do that. Um, I was also going to say that this map has some bugs where sometimes you go through a teleporter and it instantly teleports you through three more and your screen goes off like it's an epilepsy hazard. Let's go. That's just, <laughs> that's what it is. I don't know why that happens. Actually. I, I honestly couldn't tell you. It just does happen occasionally um, with no warning. So it's good stuff. But anyways, moving on. Um, Probably should talk about longest real quick. There's not much to say about it. Uh, it's that's okay. That's that's long. It's actually just like longest. That's that's the original map. Where's the where's the super long one? There it is. Yeah. So here's the super long one. Um, it's close to the maximum length. I don't think it's quite there, but uh, Halo has like a hard limit. I think it's either thirty-two thousand units or sixteen thousand, which is I think a short. Uh. I believe it's like a signed or unsigned short is the limit on like distance. And this map's close enough. 
And uh, I honestly think it's perfect because if it was any longer, it would be too long to the point where people wouldn't even try. And if it was any shorter, it wouldn't be that annoying. So it's like the perfect length so that it's just in that range where you think you can do it, but it is still way too long. It's flawless. I, I you can't believe this worked. And also, I still cannot believe that anyone said they liked this map <laughs> during that stream. <laughs> I can't believe I was like in I actually wanted to like try and cap the flag like I got really close I got like within 100 meters and then I got killed and I was so sad because I was like I'm so close to that flag there was no chance of me getting it back I would have died on the way back but like I, it was kind of great I just love that 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 event happened I assumed we would play five seconds of it and then move on but for some reason we spent like 30 minutes on that map it was great uh, I will apologize to Vinny though because I'm sure he, he seemed like he was genuinely suffering <laughs> I gotta say too, it's kind of funny. Like that was like one of those things where uh, you know, I I've watched Fine Sauce since before I even like started as a YouTuber, uh, and you know it was it was a weird experience like meeting him. Um, he was cool. He's a nice guy. Um, getting getting to getting to torture him on a live stream was uh, definitely like a bucket list item for me. But uh, yeah, moving on to... I think that's probably all the maps I want to talk about. I mean, I could quickly go over... Um, this is basically just a uh, note about like... Oh lord, where, where even is that? I think it's... Is it in here? Yeah, trying to find... There's a lot of files to this mod, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> just look at all these folders and... Everything just... It's not very well organized because... You know, one of the things that's funny about this project is... Cursed Halo has been through uh, like three development cycles. Like there was the original one, and then there was the first update, and then the second update. And each time I have like changed how I want to organize things. So it just gets worse and worse. Each time, like everything's in different, everything's in the wrong folder at this point. It's just, everything is awful and I love it. <laughs> I think it's this file. I, I reportaled uh, Sidewinder. So Sidewinder was one of those maps that was in the original well, it certainly isn't this one. I don't even know where this file is. This is great. Um, um. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, I don't even know where the file. I reportaled Sidewinder. Uh, these portals were the ones I did back in like 2018, 2019. Uh, and they were awful because I didn't know, I didn't understand the, the math behind portals, basically. Now that I understand it, I reportal this and it actually makes the map run better. This map does crash a little more than it should. I think there might be something wrong with this map fundamentally. I hope that was just like coincidental, but if that map crashes a bunch for people after the release, uh, let me know and I'll take a look at it, see if I can fix it, but we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, okay, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, weapon layouts. So I'll just load up a, a map real quick. All right, all right, so here we are on uh, the Chiron map. So, as I think I kind of mentioned in the video, there's a lot of weapons in this mod. It's like somewhere in the range of like 30 to 40 now. Um, so, having the weapon spawns be one-to-one -one is not really a good option anymore. So, you know, when you play Halo 3, the battle rifle spawns always a battle rifle. When you play any of those kind of games, it's always set. I decided to instead group weapons by type. So instead of a weapon spawn being specifically a plasma rifle, it's just a plasma weapon. And now the, this spawn point has like three different weapons it could have. Um, same thing goes for the shotgun. There's like two different shotguns you can get from a shotgun spawn, stomp, that spawn point. Uh, same thing with a needler. Actually, I think the needler's just by itself, maybe. I'd have to check. But a uh, sniper rifle, I think there's two different sniper rifles you can get. Uh, assault rifles, there's like four rifles you can get from here. Um, but the idea here is instead of having a million different spawn points, so that you have to go, like, there's only one of each weapon on the map, it's now just completely random what you get, or random within a range, I would guess would be the better way to put it. Uh, this is a power weapon spawn. There's like six power weapons that can spawn here. Uh, this is the one that headshots. <laughs> this is the weapon no one knows how to use, too. Like, I wish I could, like, convey how it worked in a mechanical way, but there's just no way to do that. It only does damage on headshots, and it only, it only basically just one shots on a headshot, so it's useless unless you headshot is the idea. Uh, the tool gun spawn has like 10 tool guns, so 
this is like the, the the mega random meme here where you you go to the tool gun spawn and you can get one of 10 different tool guns some of them are really op on purpose and some of them are completely useless uh this one is the one that yeets and shit just goes flying uh it almost always kills someone if it hits them because it just sends them into orbit uh but sometimes it doesn't sometimes they just bounce off the ceiling and are fine it's kind of great Shooting a vehicle with this is very entertaining. Um, but yeah, that's that's the idea behind weapon spawns, and that's how I redesigned this. Additionally, the grenades in um, multiplayer are limited to TNT and uh, tiny warthogs, because I was going to have four grenades in multiplayer, but it actually doesn't sync properly. Uh, I don't really know why. I asked the some de I asked the developers about it, and they were just like, meh. <laughs> so... I cut that out and I just went with two grenades and uh, yeah. Also, uh, random grenades don't sink in multiplayer, so we can't have D20s. It's kind of sad, but it's just how it is. Um, next thing, I want to talk about limit removals. So I'm sure you guys remember uh, the original releases of Cursed Halo. Uh, I guess this was this is something that maybe you wouldn't notice, but like each map in an original Cursed Halo uh, would be on a specific set of content so like i would actually pick what pieces of content i wanted in each map and kind of like had different content in each map of the campaign this is because uh the file size limits and tag space limits were really really small for the uh old versions of halo one the mcc version of the toolkit removes a lot of those limits and makes it where you can now have pretty much as much shit as you want inside of a map, and it will not complain up to a pretty insane degree. So, instead of having to like pick and choose what I wanted in each area, for the campaign, I was able to just have everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> and uh, it's, I think it makes the campaign a lot more fun because it means that I can have more randomization options than grid aids, I can have more enemy types to an almost insane degree where I think there might be too many enemy types sometimes uh, there's a couple of enemies in the cursed halo campaign that only appear in like one place uh my what comes to mind is the uh shotgun jackals i think they're on i think there's like four encounters in the whole campaign with them there's just they're just so uncommon because i didn't know where to sometimes i'm just like where do i even put these like, i've already filled out all the space so well the same thing with the vehicles like some of the vehicles only appear once in the whole campaign, like the the tiny warthog, or not the tiny, the the, the shortened shortened warthog, uh, the, the super long hog only shows up like twice. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of goofy, but I think it was more fun because it meant that there was more to see, um, and I feel like people who were playing through it, uh, I watched some people play through it, uh, like you know streamers and other YouTubers. And it seemed like they were always discovering something, even up to the last level, which was kind of what I wanted. Was like there, you never feel like you've seen everything. It, there's always something random. It's just going to happen, and you're like, "What is this? I haven't seen this yet." You know, and I, I like that that worked out pretty well uh, in the end. There's also a lot of like hard, like there's a lot of design decisions that are like, um, I'll have like stuff hidden on levels, and then I'll have a specific level where you guaranteed to find it. Um, a lot of weapons have this thing where like you can get the AR2 early on in the campaign by by pure luck but you're pretty much guaranteed to find an AR2 as soon as you get to two betrayals. So the idea is that if you somehow manage to miss it for most of the campaign, you will have one guaranteed point in the campaign where you're going to find one. Uh, that was to like kind of sort of pace out uh, the content a bit, but due to the randomness of the game, it doesn't, it doesn't always work out the way you'd expect. So it's kind of just how it is. Uh, let's move on. Animations. Okay, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that. One of the things I did in this update was actual animation work. So in the past, so I, I, I think um, it was during the remastered, uh, like adding Halo 3 guns to Dark Souls. That is when I learned how to animate. Um, and I have been improving my skills uh, quite quickly because I've been doing a lot of th third person and first person animation for various projects. And I, I was like, why don't we do some for this? Because I had didn't, I don't think I did anything animation-wise for the first round of Cursed Halo besides first-person animations. Um, so, you're gonna have to give me a second to remember where. Uh, let's check too. Man, okay, all right, there we go. Uh, 
Give me one second. Yeah, we have, um, oh, come on. Yeah, for example, the Master Chief Spin Kick here. Like, I think I did a pretty good job with that. It's, it's a pretty good animation. Uh, it's very, very satisfying to like just blat somebody with that too. You know what I mean? <laughs> this uh, little square here was what I was like was like an aiming thing. I was like, I put this here because this is where the hitbox is basically going to be, and I wanted to make sure that the uh, the foot goes right through it. You know, um, another example of an animation I did for this project was. Well, there's all of these, but those are like cutscenes. Um, you have to give me a second. Once again, I'm a, I'm a brainlet sometimes. I think this is it. So this is the thing that everyone is terrified of in the mod. <laughs> this animation right here. <laughs> uh, I have to say, uh, the first version of this was a lot slower. Um, when I was designing these enemies, I like initially they were just like more like regular jackals, but they had a melee attack, and you could just walk away from them, and they they would they were slower than you. Um, after I tested it a few times, I was like, these aren't these aren't dangerous enough, so I sped up their running animation, and I, I moved it I moved their hands so when they were running they would hold their shields up because uh, regular jackals when they run they run with the shield at their side. Uh, so I made that little change to the animation, and then I, uh, I I made the rolling animations faster, and they cover a lot more distance. And then I took this this stab animation, and I shortened it up by like five or six frames, and that was enough, so that they are now terrifying, and they will murder you if you like, are, even for a second underestimate them. And I think it's kind of great. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this was a uh, this was one of the things I think this tortured the most people. In Cursed Halo. I, I think every single person who came across them for the first time got stabbed at least three or four times in the face. Uh, so that was that was a good thing. It was a good thing. Uh, but yeah, there's a ton of animation work. One of the biggest things in terms of animation work was the Halo cart section. Uh, let's see if I could find... Yeah, so all of these animations here are the animations to make it so that the enemies in the game can actually ride in a cart. Because, for example, um, use this one. This is an uh, animation set for the hunters to be able to ride in a cart. And the way this is animated is I have a driver animation, a passenger animation, and then I have an aiming animation that allows them to actually target in every direction. The way this works is you basically give it keyframes for like shooting down behind them, shooting down to their right, shooting down to the front, etc., And then there's one for shooting to the middle and shooting high. And uh, you basically have to tell the game like what each of these frames is and what it's for, and then give it the ranges of like, like what is the maximum aiming value? What is the minimum aiming value? It's just a whole bunch of, of math you have to do. <laughs> and uh, I got it all done and it, it works. Uh, I was, this definitely took a few days of, of work to get it done because there's just a shitload of posing involved with this. Because once again, there's a lot of enemy types I had to do. None of these enemies in the basically uh, jackals and hunters and flood in the base game actually can't even get into vehicles. They don't even have the like AI code for it. So I had to. I think the I think they use different AI settings. Like I have them set to elites and I uh, have like I think they're set to elites so that they know that they're allowed to drive vehicles or something like that. Um, but it, it, it's pretty good. And uh, of course I gave the jackals a shotgun. That's a... Uh, God, shotgun, shotgun jackals were like... I think someone on a stream said you should do shotgun jackals. And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> and I just I just implemented it and I was like, let's do it. Shotgun jackals. It's such a good idea. But yeah, let's talk about Halo Kart. Uh, as that's probably like... The, that was the part that took the most development. Um, as I had to fundamentally design like a system for them to be driving... Oh, uh, let's find the code. Let's let's bring up the code. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the on the code, but uh, I will talk about it. That's not the right folder. Uh, the code. The code. Stop showing my desktop. I don't want people to know I'm such a, a barbarian who uses their desktop as like a work area. Uh, being exposed by Windows. 
C30 scripts. Yes, here we go. Uh, this is the main folder for the scripts for Halo Kart. AI driving. Just, uh, just, it's just a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of really shitty code. Uh, I've talked about Halo script in the past. It doesn't have arrays. It doesn't have loops. It doesn't have a lot of things. It doesn't have modulo, which is why there is a function in here somewhere that is just modulo. Uh, yeah, it's interesting writing code like this. But I will give you guys the the breakdown of how this works. I'm going to bring up um, Sapien and just like open one of those maps and kind of show you. All right. So uh, here's one of the tracks. You know, I actually, ooh, that reminds me. Before release, I should patch this. Yes. I'm going to make a note of that, actually. So uh, one thing, uh, I guess this is just an odd, uh, like a tangent. Um, these little lighting errors are actually caused by a change. Um, MCC had a change to its shaders to be more like the original Xbox. While that does look better for the original maps on the Xbox, like or the original maps in the campaign, it does look fucked up for flat shading. And this is flat shading because it's supposed to be Mario Kart. And it causes these like weird lighting issues like this. Uh, they added a fix, though. Uh, there is a shader flag you can change to make that go away. And that's cool. Uh, thank you to, I think Khan was partly responsible for that. I don't know exactly what happened. I just know, like, I, he's the one who suggested it, I think. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's a, I need to apply that fix and update the mod with that because that'd be a good idea. Anyways, um, there's a lot of stuff, but the main thing, uh, how the driving works is I actually have to segment the trap track into volumes. So each section of the track is called track span. Uh, and this is this for example, this is track span two. Um, when you when an AI enters track span two, it is then given instruction to drive to a point in the next track span. So as soon as the AI drives into this point of the, this part of the track span, they are then given the instruction to immediately drive to this track span right here. And then when they enter this track span, they are then told to instruction drive to this track span. So effectively, I'm just giving the AI like a road to follow, like constant series of points and volumes to follow around the map and if they get outside of it basically if they manage to like get into a situation where they're not in any track span they are told to drive back to the center of the map which which should bring them back into a track span now of course this fails sometimes and this is why you might notice uh, sometimes the ai just gets stuck they they sometimes just get oofed and um drive into a wall I have tried to make that work better, but it is basically impossible. There is honestly not much you can do at a certain point. Like there's just like a limit <laughs> to how smart I can make them because there is a lot of code uh, that drives them. And it actually is so much, it, it causes the problem where I run out of like script memory. Since the scripting language design was designed to run on original Xbox, which had like 500 megabytes of RAM, I think, maybe less than that. It's like 128 megabytes of RAM or something insanely low like that. The The scripting memory space is really tiny for this game. And it, you it, you can you can cause a stack overflow with like 16 deep uh, of uh, nested statements. It, it's like nothing. <laughs> it's all, all it takes is, is like 16 deep nesting and you're, and you're done. Uh, so you have to be really careful with how you write stuff in this engine. And I definitely ran into the problem where I was like causing a memory leak of some kind at one point. I uh, sort of fixed that. I'm not gonna claim it's 100% fixed. It might actually still call it. it might still happen under some circumstances, but it mostly works. But yeah, this was uh, this was painful because it takes a lot of time to like map out this and then make sure they can drive the course. This is why Bowser's Castle is so bad. Uh, the AI just can't. I I tried, and I was like I I thought about cutting it. I was like. Maybe I should just cut this map, but at the same time, I like that map and I think it's fun to drive. So I was like, I will just let the AI cheat and like teleport past some of the, the boundaries. Uh, and it sort of works. It's it's definitely not great. I I don't know if it can be done any better though. I think it's, it's done as good as it possibly could be done. It's just the fact that it's not good enough, really. Um, yeah, uh, there's a whole bunch of, a lot of people have asked me um, how the uh, how the the blue shell works and the lightning. Um, 
They're called trips in this. Uh, the idea behind the, the lightning and the blue shell is it's literally just a rubber banding mechanic. If the player is too far ahead, it just fucks them up a little bit so that they're forced to be pulled back to the AI so the AI has a chance to like interact. Because because of the fact that I can't make the AI faster or slower, uh, like I can't actually rubber band them, I needed something to make it so that if you got way ahead, uh, it would make the match closer. Because the, the thing that is most boring in a racing game is when you're 10 miles ahead of the AI and like they have zero chance of ever interacting with you and you just, you're just going to win. Uh, so while mo some people say that's unfair, uh, I would have put it this way. The AI is driving with like three brain cells. Uh, so they need all the help they can get. <laughs> they're, they're so bad that they need all the help they can get. And so this is fair. Don't, don't, don't at me on that. Um, but yeah, the, uh, I think the code, it's actually not in this, is it? No, the, the actual trip trigger. So if anyone wants to know the actual math behind it, let me find race. Um, I believe it is right. Oh yeah. Don't, don't even get me started on this. This is a, a, a custom function for randomization because there is no math random or anything like that in this. Uh, God, what is this? I can't even remember. I don't even remember how this works. It was like four months ago I wrote this. If the player is leading, we ruin his day. There we go. Um, so the idea is that for every... I believe for like every 10 frames that you are in first place, it adds a 1 in 32 chance for you to get blue shelled or lightninged. And then each consecutive check that you're still in first place afterwards increases the chance by one in 32. So it's one in 32, two 32, three in 32. So if you, if you're only like slightly ahead, it's a one in 32 chance to get blue shelled. But if you're like a full 10 seconds ahead of the second place uh, AI, uh, it's very likely you'll get blue shelled. That's, that's how it works. Uh, it's like a rolling check to see, are you still ahead? Are you still way ahead? Are you still way ahead? And it keeps adding to that chance. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, and then if anyone, if anyone wants to speed run the, these maps, uh, there is uh, the way that the, the race checkpoints work is that it checks four checkpoints on the map to make sure you've been through those four checkpoints. Uh, once you've been through the four checkpoints that are registered as like the, the, the key checkpoints in the map, it uh, allows you to finish a lap. So if you wanted to speed run, all you have to do is find the four checkpoints that count as the important checkpoint sections and just like go to those four checkpoints and then go to the back to the start to go to the next lap. So you could theoretically like giga speed run uh, and do mega shortcuts that way. But uh, you'd have to figure out, you'd have to look at the code. I, I think I'm gonna release the code for this uh, uh, soon enough I, I will upload this code eventually so people can fuck with it if they want to make their own race maps uh but for the time being uh it, you can you can decompile the maps and that's basically just as good but you know that's pretty much that's pretty much everything for ai driving there's the johnson code here which ugh, gah. um <laughs> oh also the item boxes uh just so people know how they work in in single player they have a random, they heal you slightly, they have a random chance to give you an overshield, and they have a like random chance to give Johnson a, a, an upgrade to his gun. The upgrades to the guns are, are linear for Johnson, so he goes like assault rifle, pistol, shotgun, sniper, rockets. Um, and that's just like when you go through a item box, there's a random chance to get that upgrade. In multiplayer, it just gives you a random gun. And it gives the, the second player who's, who's on the back a Random chance to get a grenade, random chance to get a new gun, random chance to get healed, random chance to get an overshield. Um, you you could just get it. it like I said, it's just all randomized. But uh, there are uh, the the better guns like the plasma cannon are weighted, and some of the item boxes actually have better weighting, where like uh, some of the item boxes have a chance to have a higher chance to give you something good. So that's also a part of it as well. Like the the item boxes that are like harder to get to are actually better, which is accurate to Mario Kart, I think. Um, I think that's how that worked in my Mario Kart, but I, I, you know, it's, it's a thing. Uh, but yeah, that's, 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 that's Halo Kart. 
it took a long time to get it working. Lots and lots and lots of trial and error, lots of debugging. Uh, there were a lot of crashes I had to fix um, from memory leaks and just overloading the game engine. Uh, yeah, and there's one bug in Halo, uh, one last thing. There's a there's a bug in Halo Kart that I cannot fix. I have no idea how to fix it. And if anyone ever figures out how to fix it, please let me know and I'll patch it in. Um, web, the web, the uh, the enemies that have plasma weapons that have like a, a slow projectile don't know how to shoot backwards. They will. I'm sure people have noticed this. Like if you're behind an elite. They will just look at you. They'll point their weapon at you and look at you, but they won't shoot you because they can't figure out how to shoot on a moving vehicle. Um, the the Marines, people with hit scan weapons have no problems. Uh, their AI can just just figure that out. But uh, if anyone wants to figure that out for me, I'd love to know why uh, elites uh, on the back of a vehicle can't seem to figure out how to aim and shoot properly at enemies that are behind them. It's just such an awkward bug. I, I genuinely have no fucking idea. Uh, but yes, moving on. The Johnson code. Oh Lord, let's talk about the Johnson code. Yes, let me load up, um, load up a library real quick. All right. So the library. Uh, as I've said in the video, I I added a super Johnson AI partner person. Um, it is a pretty complicated little doodad to add, particularly because AI and Halo aren't meant to be able to like follow you around a lot. Uh. I'm sure, you, I'm sure a lot of people who've played Halo have noticed that, like, you get Marines, and they'll follow you for a while, but oftentimes they just kind of get confused. Like, if you get them in a Warthog and drive them out somewhere, they're just going to stand there confused, like, I don't know what to do anymore. That is because uh, you actually have to, like, give them firing positions for every single section of the map, otherwise they just don't know how to navigate. So, uh, in here you can see um, these, these little squares in the ground. This is telling Johnson... Like this section of the map is this uh, is section E, and it is the first section for firing positions. Uh, and then when the player walks from section E to walks to section Z over here, uh, it tells Johnson, "Okay, I need to use firing positions from section Z." I had to add these for every single part of the map all the way to the end, so that Johnson has some idea on how to like navigate like by hand navigate each part of the map going all the way through each area and yeah, yeah it, it, this is this is a mess <laughs> additionally there's a bunch of code uh for johnson because this is like he has all that like extra dialogue and stuff he responds to things in the map um there is a whole jumble of code for him that i'm gonna pull up well that is if i can learn how to click on this. Thank you. Mission Johnson. Yeah. So uh, this is Johnson's brain right here. Uh, not Switch Johnson. Um, Johnson update. Yeah, Mission Johnson update. This is the Johnson brain, the center of all Johnson activity. Uh, most of this code is dedicated to like detecting certain events, like checking when a vehicle flips over, checking when the player's dead. This. Uh, I actually had to patch that. It didn't work at first. Checking for player getting healed like by a health pack. Checking for overshields. Checking for the game save. Like all these little details so we can just have comments about those things when they happen. Um, all of that runs through a single function that like it's a... I think it's a blocking function that's just like Johnson... Oh no, wait. Uh, yeah, it's a blocking function that tells the game uh, Johnson is currently talking shit about something. Um... And yeah, the other part of this is uh, moving him from one section of the map to the other. This is a little buggy and it's definitely has it. I've seen this break on some occasions, but the general idea is that when you go from one section of the map to the next and it loads, it like deletes Johnson, recreates him and moves him back to where he's supposed to be. And it, it kind of works. <laughs> it also moves him onto the next series of like... Uh, pathfinding and fire firing position nodes so that he actually can navigate again uh like i said it, it works okay but this game engine was not designed to have like a permanent ai follower at all it's such a pain to do but i think it's worth it i think it was a lot, i think it's honestly one of the better parts of the mod uh this level now um so 
worked out good. I also was talking about the the, the voice acting. So like I said, uh, uh, Vocal Butcher did an amazing job. Just <laughs> he really gave it a personality. You know what I mean? Like he gave Johnson like the best personality. It's just super fun. Um, I will show you guys how many files though there are for this. Uh, if I can remember where the fuck they are, I think they're yeah. So. These are the fixed dialogue lines for Johnson. Like these are the ones that are guaranteed to happen um, at specific parts. Like particularly when when he's talking about the math quiz and stuff like that. Um, but also, there is the like randomized um, the randomized stuff. So these are just like events that the uh, the events that a, a a biped unit can talk about. Like just you know on their own, like a random chance system and whatnot. Uh, some of the obvious ones are like pain sounds and stuff like that. Just, I kind of, I kind of just had to separate them out how I, how I felt would be good. But, um, some of them, there's a lot, some of them are not a lot for firing. There's a ton. Yeah. It's just, hold on. I'll just, I'll just do a quick count. There are 205 files in here. So 205 voice lines. And then there's another, 150 files in there, so it's it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot, and there it's 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 just varied enough that you don't hear a whole lot of repeats in a single playthrough of the mission. Uh, so it turned out pretty good. And um, yeah, I really like the D20 ones where he's like rolling <laughs> rolling for initiative. <laughs> Those are great. The ability for Johnson to throw D20s is also wonderful because it's the only thing that can really kill him. I gave him like a thousand HP in this mission. He can die, but like, it takes a lot of punishment. But a, a nuke or an oof is very much capable of one-shotting him, so... Definitely, uh, him being able to throw D20s is, is, is part of the fun, I think. Because we can talk a little bit about the upgrade system. So the, the spin kick, jump kick, uh, gun boots, and gun head. Originally, it was only going to be Gunhead, uh, but as I kind of like was messing with the Gunhead thing, I realized I could do more with it, and so it kind of evolved from there. Um, the special actions script is what controls this. This is some spicy code. <laughs> I am basically uh, using a function in the game engine to test for specific buttons to run like a parallel input system next to the game's like hard-coded inputs. These don't work as well. I, I wish I could make them work better than this. Uh, sadly, there's no way to like bind special keys for a mod or anything like that. Uh, one of the things that's like a lot of people don't understand is that the double jump is actually a double tap. So uh, if you jump and then wait and then you want to jump again, you have to hit space twice. Because the way it works is it looks for you just it looks for when you press space two times within five frames. So you have to jump and then double tap to jump again. It's like I wish I could make that work better, obviously, but that's that is the best that can be done within this game engine. Additionally, there's no like way to like check if he's landed on the ground. So it's the double jump isn't like once per jump, it's uh once every two or three seconds. So you can like if you're falling for a long time, you can double jump twice. Uh and things like that. It's, uh, I also feel like the, the barrage, uh, the gun barrage really is a little weaker than it should have been. I think I buffed it in the most recent patch, but it, it's a little weaker than I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be just like absolutely overwhelming, but the problem is it's, it's just spraying bullets everywhere. And so in order to make it actually useful, it sprays bullets that have invisible giant hitboxes. So they actually hit things. It's not perfect, but it, it works well enough. It usually does kill whatever's directly in front of you, but uh, I wish I could have made that a little stronger somehow. But, you know, limits of the game engine. That's what I can do. And uh, I think I think it's kind of like basically everything I want to talk about today. Um, I'll probably do a video uh, soon on the, the, the hunter survival thing. That's, uh, that's also kind of interesting, the way that works. It's... It's it's just all fancy code. That's the problem. Like I, I a lot of the stuff in this this version of the mod is just fancy coding, and that's harder to talk about because I don't want to sit here and, and like monotonously be like. And so the function calls the AI place and then translates the AI that was placed into another squadron and then 
handles that with another function checking the AI account. Like I don't want to I don't want to do <laughs> like reading through code and explaining what it does. I don't think most people want me to do that. That's a little too boring. Uh, I just like to give a quick overview, just talk about like things I, that I liked uh, about this project. But um, I'll bring up the, I will probably be doing a video of me playing this with someone, I think is the idea in the next few days. I'm probably gonna give Vocal Butcher, I'm gonna ask him if he wants to do that. Um, he hasn't seen this either, so it'll be fun for, you know, get that reaction. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's main. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, code for the 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 uh, the, the hunter survival. Um, it's kind of this is fancy because it's written in a way where uh, the entire thing is driven by a simple loop. There's no like I didn't have to like hard code every wave manually by hand. I just basically have to call a single thing right here that says uh, do wave and then set wave wave plus one, like each wave is basically automatically generated the dropships are automatically generated and filled i don't have to like sit there and fill out 22 waves of information i just have functions that generate them on the fly which is once again you you'd think oh that's obvious why would you i mean obviously you do that but like doing it in this fucking game engine requires some some big brain bullshit and some stupid shit like this <laughs> so d fight me uh, Halo script coders know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> Halo script coders, like shout outs in the chat. You know what I'm talking about. Halo script is hard because you can't do anything with it. You have to be like, you have to think in the seventh dimension to get anything done. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, thank you all for hanging out, watching this video. Uh, stuff in the future is coming. I promise I'm going to try and be more, I, I have ideas of what I want to do in the future that will be less me not doing anything for six months and more me doing things on a more regular basis. I, I haven't finalized anything yet, so I'm not going to like get into details, but soon things, I promise. Um, love you guys uh, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.